In this video, I have wind instruments that I want to show you here in GarageBand. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live today where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. We are back here in GarageBand and what I'm going to do is show you how we can use instruments like the flute, the clarinet, the oboe and even the bassoon in our tracks here in GarageBand. They're right here, default instruments in GarageBand. Let's jump in and show you how to get started. Now to get us started, I've got a couple of instruments here. We've grabbed the 70s rock ballad piano. That's just one of our Apple loops here. And we've got Benny doing his grapevine. And that together sounds like this. So just a nice little bed for us to add some instruments over the top. So let's show you how to do that now. Here in GarageBand, we're going to tap on the big plus button in the bottom left. Now, under keyboard, you want to go to more sounds, which is in the bottom right here, and tap on that one. We're going to come back all the way to our front menu here and scroll down. And at the very bottom, you'll notice that there's other. Now, this is a slightly hidden but very cool place because you can see we have a heap of different instruments in here from strings to brass to world to our guitars and bass and a whole bunch of others. What we're going to focus on today is these top four, our wind instruments. So we're going to start with a flute. We'll tap on the flute and this brings our flute sound in here. If we play the uh, keyboard. Quite a nice flute sound, yeah? You've got the nice vibrato. You've got that breathiness sound that comes in at the start and you can even get a bit of that glissando effect moving up and down. So why don't we layer in a bit of a flute part here. I'll show you a couple of ways that we can get that done. The first way we can add some of these sounds is to use autoplay. Now this is great if you don't know your notes, you don't know how to play keyboard, or <clears throat> you're just a bit rusty. What you need to do is tap on the chords button here. Now with this selected, you can just you can actually tap on these to play chords, which is pretty cool. But the even cooler thing is we can turn on autoplay. And then if we tap on these, it plays its own little pattern. And we've actually got four different variations of autoplay as well. If we change it up here, that's pretty cool. Number three. And number four. And with some of our instruments, if you tap with two or three fingers, you get a different sound. Flute isn't one of them. Some of these will only have the four different auto plays. So if you're used to your guitars and your pianos where you can tap with multiple fingers and get different sounds, it doesn't always work with these ones. But I kind of liked the number two. So to record this in, we just hit the record button and then tap on this, C. Now it's a little bit quiet there, so if we come back, we've recorded that in, if we come back here, we'll turn up the flute and turn down this drum and piano. And uh, it's a very subtle little flute sound that we have here. So yeah, you can record that way and use your autoplay. Now, if you don't want to use autoplay, that's cool. You can actually play in manually using the keyboard or using a MIDI controller. So if we delete that one out here, we come back to our keyboard. Let's uh, tap on this button here to go back to our keyboard mode. And let's actually play in a bit of a flute sound here that's going to match this original loop. So we're set up and ready to go. Once again, we'll hit record and we'll play this in. There you go. So we can play in our flute part that goes along nicely with our original part. And because this is all MIDI, then we've got the ability to edit this. So if we come in here and we go to edit, you might have noticed because I was poking at the screen with my fingers, we weren't getting these going nicely into each other. So if I wanted to edit these to make them a little bit better, we can actually move these around here like this and actually get the sounds moving into each other. And if we play that, that section now, it'll sound like this.
And I could go through and fix all of those up as well if I didn't want that kind of gap in between where I was moving my fingers. So that's pretty cool. We'll hit done on that one. Let's now jump in and add some more instruments here because there's some other cool wind sounds that we have in GarageBand. So once again, we're going to hit the plus button in the bottom left. We're going to go to more sounds. And this time, let's go a clarinet. Uh, a clarinet is a not my friend because I played it in high school and I was just awful at it. I could not get the hang of it. Anyway, that's uh, not relevant. So uh, the clarinet sounds like this. Very nice sound, yeah. These sounds are surprisingly good, and if you're using them in your tracks, especially if you've got a full arrangement, they can actually sound amazing, and I've used them in, in a lot of different songs. So we can do the same thing with the clarinet. We can either go to the chords mode, like this, and then use your autoplay and get sounds like this, or like this. <laughs> so there's some cool things there. Or again, we can come back and play in our sound. Now, I'll show you this because it's the same on all the instruments. You've also got attack and release here. So your attack is going to be when you hit the note. It plays it straight away. If you want more of a cinematic rise, if you turn the attack up, now if we tap on the key... Hear how it's slowly coming up? That's your attack setting. For most of the time, you want the note to start right when you want it, yeah? But if you're finding that it's too sharp and it's just too aggressive, you can actually dial that up a bit. With your release, it's the opposite. So if we put the release all the way up and we tap on a note and I let go, hear how it's going away slowly like that? The same if uh, we go the release the other way. Let go. Gone. So you usually want your attack pretty quick and give you a little bit of release just for that natural, even a little bit more perhaps. Yeah, you definitely want a little more on the release. Okay, let's play in a clarinet part now to, uh, to complement our flute part and let's build out our arrangement. Alright, now I didn't play that in probably as hard or as loud as I, as I needed to, uh, so what we can do is we can either turn up the volume here, or we can change the velocity of those notes by coming in here, tapping, and going to edit. So you'll notice here, if you're editing in, in the editor, every note we touch, you can go to velocity and see. So that was sort of middling velocity, there, about the middle, yeah, about the middle. And I think as I realized towards the end here, I actually played this last note really loud. Yeah, I did. So we actually need to turn the velocity down on that one. Uh, whoop, tap it, tap velocity. Oh, it's having a few little kittens here. <laughs> Some garage band, play nicely here, please. Don't you know that people are watching? All right, tap, velocity. <laughs> we can't turn the velocity down on that one. What if we move it here? Tap, velocity, yeah. Okay, sometimes you just need to do a few things like that. All right, we'll hit done on that one. So we've got our two tracks in there now, and uh, we can start mixing these in together, but let's add a couple more tracks before we get to that stage. Once again, we're going to tap the plus button. We're going to go to more sounds, and we're in our other section. Oboe is a, a, an instrument that I've actually used. I used it in the intro to my song called Drinking With You, and it sounds really cool. It sounds like this. Again, you've got that nice vibrato, you've got that nice tone, and uh, yeah, it's a surprisingly effective instrument to use. Again, we could use the other different things that we've used before, and if you want to learn about all the different keyboard stuff you can do, there's another video down in the description and a heap more here on the channel. But for now, let's just uh, find uh, an oboe part that we can play in here that might complement this flute and this clarinet. the pause, the pause, the pause button there, come back to our track view. And uh, there you go. We've built out, we've got our three tracks. If we just uh, solo these out, uh, they sound a bit like this. Mm -hmm. 
Now, you might be thinking, what about the timing there, Pete? Some of that's a bit off. Well, let's pause quickly and do a little quantization work here and see if we can get these lined up a little better because when you're playing things in by hand, you're always going to have a few timing issues. So to access quantization, which is the timing of our notes, we're going to tap here on the plugins and EQ and up the top here, we've got track settings and quantization. Now we'll just solo this flute to start with. We'll turn on our metronome so we can hear it in time. With no quantization at the moment, it sounds like this. So a few of those sounds are a little bit off the beat. Now, if we wanted to fix these up, we can go straight, quantization, and we can quantize down to either like a quarter note, an eighth note, or a sixteenth note. Now, I'll normally quantize to a sixteenth note because I tend to do some sort of syncopated rhythms and different patterns. If it's really much just like a do, 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 you want it right on the beat, you may want to go to a quarter or an eighth. So I'll just show you what it will be like. If we went right down to a quarter, it's going to cause some problems. It's going to do this. because it can only put things on the beat. If we do it to the eighth note, it's going to do something like this. Closer, yeah? If we go to the sixteenth note, then it's usually going to line up those ones that are just off, but not play around with our rhythm too much. Let's take a listen. But the problem is, this is a swing rhythm, and I deliberately played a swing rhythm. So it's like da, 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 da. It's not da, 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 da. It's not a straight rhythm. So if we want a swing rhythm, you guessed it, we use swing. So I'll normally use something like 1 16th light swing, and take a listen to what this does to our flute now. So it's not perfect, but it's starting to bring it more onto the beat. If we go to say a one eighth note heavy swing, let's take a listen to what this does. Ba ba ba. So it's really starting to swing it up. Something like the one sixteenth heavy may work best in this case. Yeah, so it's, it's it's getting there. You might we might need to do some actual manual manipulation here. But if we if we bring all these in and put them all at the same that same swing, was it light or heavy? What did I do with flute? Heavy. So we'll make it heavy duty on all of these. We'll go quantization for all. We'll put them as swing, and then we'll uh, put them all one eighteen one sixteenth heavy swing. And let's listen to these together now with the quantization. So it's not bad yet, it's getting closer. There might still need to be some manual editing there, but it's not far off the mark. So that's how, if you're playing things in manually, whether it's wind instruments or others, you can use quantization to line up your notes and make it sound a little bit more on the beat. Let's try this one more time with feeling one more instrument here because I love me some bassoon action. So let's get a bassoon going on here because the other thing I wanna show you is we can play the bassoon. And we can also adjust the uh, octave. So if you look over on the left here, we can go. You can go up and down. So if you want to change around where you're playing, I'll probably play it here around, around between C1 and C2 because we've already got some higher and some mid-range instruments. We want to use the bassoon for a bit of a bass. So. Yeah, a bit of that sort of sound. So let's cue this one up and record in some bassoon to finish us off. All right, we have some bassoon in our life and that can only be a good thing. So here is our instruments again. Let's solo them out and see what we've pulled together here using these very nice samples. In fact, we'll do one more thing before we play this back. And that one more thing is in fact, two more things. I wanna do some stereo panning and just check in on our effects just to see if we can make this sound the best it can be. So we've got our four instruments here. We're going to tap on the little mixer icon at the top here. Now what I wanna do is I wanna put my flute over here sort of far to the right. I wanna grab my oboe 
I move this over far to the left, then I want to grab my sort of lower sounding instruments, my clarinet, put this sort of just a little right, and my bassoon, and put it just a little left. And this just gives us a nice stereoscape. If we play this back now... So it just means that we've got sort of a slightly nicer stereo spread there. It can work for us. The other thing that I would generally do is, now these are usually have the sort of right effects on there. So you can see here we've got a little bit of reverb on each of these. If we wanted to increase that, so if we wanted to sort of bring them into more of like a, a, a hall kind of set. In fact, let's check our master effects. Let's go to reverb and let's bring these into like a medium hall because that's sort of where you'd expect to hear an orchestra kind of sound. And if we give these all a little more reverb, we'll even give our bassoon just a bit. You don't want too much on your bass instruments but a little bit like that now let's take a listen to these four instruments together Hopefully you're hearing there that you've got that spacey reverb of that medium hall sound. We've gone from having four individual virtual instruments to kind of having a woodwind or a wind quartet going on here, playing four pretty cool sounds. And you can imagine if you start adding in some of your more theatrical kind of drums, your string sounds, you can create some pretty uh, nice pieces of work here, uh, just using your virtual instruments here in GarageBand. One very last but not least thing is to mix these all together. So you heard and you saw me moving these faders around just to get a bit of a balanced mix. Now we can just keep adjusting these or the other thing we can do is do a bit of a faders down mix here. So let's just make sure we have our piano and drums at about the right level here. Piano down a bit, drums up a bit. That's about right, so yeah, a little bit more on the drums there. Has this piano got enough verb? Yeah, we'll give it a little more reverb to bring it into our space. And now we're gonna bring up these one by one and get a nice balance both in the volume and in the stereo spectrum. So let's hit play again and bring in our flute. Bring in our clarinet. Bring in our oboe. And finally our bassoon. Cool, yeah? So that's uh, that's what we can do there. And you, you've noticed here that your treble instruments, the higher sounds, usually need a little bit more volume because they're not going to cut through your mix as much. Your lower instruments, in this case the oboe and the bassoon, we don't need as much volume because they're going to cut through a lot more. So that is going to do it for this one. I hope you had some fun. If you did, hit that like button. Let's go out now, listen to this little arrangement one more time, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers!